how come you can be doing exercise and not have perfect mental health? When we know exercise is good for your mental health. Well, let's examine that. So what do we know having, having been serious about doing exercise for our well-being for the last two years? What do we know? Well, we do know that you need to be very disciplined, that um, exercise in the moment, it's painful. That's why most people avoid it. I mean, every time I go to do an exercise session, every single time feels like if I was starting the first day. Every single time. There has not been one single session where that has not been and the case. Every time I say, why am I doing this? <laughs> exactly. And why do I put myself through this? And you would think, you know, the body is now used to it. You would be okay. But it's not. It is a painful thing. So it's not surprising that most people, we, we tend to avoid it if we can. We, we take the lazy option. But we do know that when we do it, we do feel good. What is the difference between somebody exercising three times a week and an athlete who exercises five to seven times a week, not just for an hour, but for three, four hours and they get up early and that becomes their life? Well, it's very different, isn't it? One, one is the pushing their body to the limit and beyond. Uh, I mean, athletes are like us. Athletes, the, the body, their reaction, their way of thinking, it's completely different. And it's also they have a winning mindset. Yeah, which is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, if you're in, in any workplace, you want to be, you know, you want to have a team of high performers who yeah. are willing to to work hard, to, yeah, the more to people do a great the, job. That's... The more people with a winning yeah. mindset, you'd think better, Yeah. You're better. So one of the questions, and we've seen this come up in some of our training courses recently as well, is managers asking, well, how do I support those people to, perform really well at the highest level we can but at the same time I do care about mental health and well-being and I don't want to burn out this person I and especially in recent times you know people have been asked to do a lot and so how do we how do we keep up with just the sheer volume of work but and look after our teams at the same time yeah how do I get that balance right what if I'm the cause of their mental ill health because I'm giving them all this work to do you know, and only a small amount yeah. of time to do it in. That's right. Yeah. So athletes, their status is when they win gold or silver mm. or bronze. Mm. But especially if they win gold, because gold, everybody remembers number one, but nobody remembers number two. So number one is what they go for. But how many number ones can you have? That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you have so many athletes trying to be number one, but only very few will become number yeah. one. And what happens if you do become number one and the limelight is taken away, like in yes. Naomi's case, yeah. the limelight was taken a little bit away a lot um, from the occasion because of what happened. Yeah. And so that, but that's you've also got to maintain that as well. The problem with that you know, wanting the, we all love appreciation and we all love recognition and, you know, most people like others to, to acknowledge it. Some people don't want to be in the limelight and, and that's fine too. But the problem then is what happens when the feedback's not great. It's, it's very public, isn't it? And that's, this is the thing with doing the media interviews, or, but also social media as well. I, mean, I, I don't know how many of us would cope so well if every day we were getting a whole bunch of people commenting on our work performance yeah. you know who, who aren't even in our workplace well so imagine that, imagine if you did what, your your gym sessions with a camera following you around <laughs> and picking up everything that you do wrong and you do right yeah and people making or, comments or on every that. typo you make on an email or every yeah. you know so you want recognition thing. yeah and you want feedback and that's a, that's an important thing yeah. for workplaces and for us for our own mental health. Yeah. We want recognition, we want certain status, mm -hmm. but we also want uh, feedback. Yeah. So uh, this is important. When we talk about we recognition, have to to we don't talk about praise. Too, though, you have to be able to take that feedback too. Yeah. You know, whichever way it comes, we can't just as managers tell everybody it's all wonderful all yeah. the time. We have to be real. Yeah. As well. So. But, but just like with exercise, yes, we, you do it for the benefit of, of, of the physicality of it, of the, of the psychology of it. But you know, as, as people, we want to know, uh, am I losing weight? 
that's a feedback mm, mechanism. Yeah. Or uh, am I get putting muscle on? Am, am I looking a little am bit better? Stronger? Am I getting stronger? Am I getting am I getting healthier? Do I have less colds? Do I have less this less physical issues? So that's kind of feedback. You also get the feedback from your trainer, uh, your form. Are you doing it right? Are you, what what do you need to do? What are the sets? What's what the repetition? So you're getting all that feedback. And in the workplace, we can learn very important lessons from that. So people need that recognition. They need the status, not necessarily the recognition of status. Do they feel important? Do they feel that the job is important? Is is that being done? And the other one is, do they do they get enough feedback to know to know that they're doing a good job? So when and this is the problem between school and universities and and workplaces you know you go to school and university and you get feedback you you know you a, get, lot. <laughs> you get a lot of feedback you get told exactly how you're doing then you go into a workplace and you don't get there's no clear cut much. you don't get an a or a b or a c or you don't <laughs> sometimes you're flying solo you don't know sometimes you know people are not happy with you but you don't exactly know why they're not happy um because People are afraid to tell you, or we're politically correct, or we don't, we don't like to hurt people's feelings. So, so that's a good thing for managers to, to think about and to remember. People need status, yeah. that they feel that they, it's important what they're doing, but they also need good real, real feedback that is not sugar-coated, but presented in the right way. Yeah. And then, if, if we have these elements, that's, that's not just the movement, or the work that we're doing, but there's certain elements that need to be observed for good mental health to happen. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week, so when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues, and your loved ones. Oh,